today I'm going to tell what's called a Jataka story. And it's a story about the earlier lives of the Buddha as he was preparing to be a teacher and to help other beings in his final life. For many eons, it's said, he was reborn as all different kinds of animal and human, awaiting the time when he could actually be, be a Buddha and teach others. So he's reborn as an, a lion, an elephant, a mouse, and sometimes as a human, as a king, sometimes as a very poor man. In the story I'm going to tell today, the, Bo the Bodhisattva, as he is called, this is the name given to the Buddha as he prepares for his final life, is reborn as a hare. And he's a very happy and uh, cheerful hare, and he lives in a clearing, in a thicket. On one side there's a village, on another side a mountain, and on another side a river. And he has three very good friends that he spends most of his time with, an otter, a monkey and a jackal. One day the hare notices, and if you're a hare you notice the seasons and the stars and the moon a great deal. He notices that the moon is coming up to fullness. It's nearly a full moon day. And this is considered very lucky in ancient India because it's a time when you can be generous and do things to help other people and practice various kinds of meditations as well. And it's, if you do it, if you do these things at the time of the full moon, it's considered very, mu very much good luck for you and you will become very happy. So he sees it's the full moon coming up and he says to his friends, why don't we all tomorrow try and be generous, try and help other people in some way and give them food and things. And that would be a really good way of keeping the Apostata Day, that's the full moon day. They all agree. Now, the next morning, the otter wakes up and thinks he'd like a swim. So he swims off into the river. And as he gets onto the bank, he notices that there's a very fishy smell around. He follows it back to its source and he sees that a fisherman has just come in with his catch of seven fish and buried them in the sand. So he thinks, oh, that's lucky for me. I think I'll take these fish. So he asks the air three times, does anybody own these fish? Does anybody own these fish? Does anybody own these fish? Now the fisherman has gone off to get some more fish, so of course he doesn't answer. So the otter perhaps wrongly thinks they must be there for anybody to take. So he thinks, well, I'm very lucky today. I think I'll take them home with, he, home with me. And he puts them in his uh, mouth and takes, him back to, takes them back to his lair. Then the jackal goes out. And he decides to visit the hut of a hunter who's away out in the hills hunting. And he notices that the hunter has left some food on a spit, uh, a cooked lizard and a bowl of curds on a rope. And he does the same thing. He says, does anybody own this food? Does anybody own this food? Does anybody own this food? And of course there's no answer because the hunter is out working. So he puts the rope with the curd bowl round his neck, puts the spit and the lizard in his mouth and sneaks off into the thicket. And he thinks he's been very, very virtuous and has a snooze. And then the monkey goes for his wander in the woods and he sees a mango tree and of course, mango trees are there for anybody. So the monkey just rightly just takes some and takes them home to his little lair. And he feels very virtuous too. And he has a snooze. But the hare has a problem because he just likes eating grass. So he thinks, well, what on earth can I give to anybody? Now, of course, he's the Buddha in an earlier life, so he doesn't think of pinching it from somebody else. 
but what he does think of is a plan he devises for himself. I know, he thinks. What I'm going to do is I shall just offer myself as a meal to anybody and I'll leap into a fire and that person can eat me all up. It's rather a strange thing to offer. So strange, in fact, that in the heavens above, in the skies above, the king who lives there called King Shakya heard what was going on. Now, he's really like a kind of embodiment of common sense. He's a kind of god that, if you like, represents everything sensible and kind in the world. And he thinks, hmm, I'm going to have to put a stop to this. So, he comes down to earth and pretends to be a holy man needing food. And he goes first to the otter. Oh, I need some food. And the otter said, well, I've got these fish. I, I fished for them myself this morning, which isn't quite true. And the king of the gods, King Shakya, says, thank you. I'll come back later for them. Then he goes to see the jackal and the jackal says, oh, I've got some meat and a bowl of curds and a lizard. Would you like those? And the king of the gods says, thank you. I'll come back later for them. Then he goes to the monkey and the monkey says, I've got some very nice mangoes here and it's a lovely little spot. Why don't you just sit down and enjoy them here? And the king of the gods said, thank you. I might come back later. Finally, he goes to the hare and the hare said, oh, I've been wanting to give some food to you for so long. I've just been sitting here hoping somebody would come by. Now, you don't have to worry. You won't be taking life. You won't be taking any animal life because if you just make me a fire, what I want you to do is get it ready for cooking an animal. And then I'll jump in and you can have me for your lunch. Now, King Shaka, still pretending to be a holy man, said, OK, that's fine. But of course, we know that he's really there just to try and stop this happening. So the hare, so the king makes the fire and makes it very nice and hot, apparently. And the hare leaps in like a swan. But when he lands, he finds that, in fact, it's very, very cool and refreshing because the king of the gods has magical powers and he's made the fire look like a fire, but actually it's not hot at all. So the hare says, well, what's going on here? Why aren't I cooking? I feel quite fine in this fire. It's just like lotus blossoms. I don't feel as if I'm cooking at all. And King Shakya says, no, I didn't really want to eat you. And he shows himself for who he really is, which is a shiny god, not a holy man. And he lets the hair out of the fire and he says, you have been so generous. I am overwhelmed with your generosity. That's the reason I came here, just to see you. So go home safely, but from now on, I want the whole world to remember what real generosity is like. So he squeezes one of the nearby mountains and gets some essence from them. And then he makes a mark on the moon and it's in the mark of a hare. And he says to the hare, now look at that. And when you see that and when other people do, they will all remember your great generosity. Now, to this day, if you go to the Southern Hemisphere and you look up at the moon, you will see a hair on the side of the moon. It actually just looks as if his picture's up there. And this, we are told, is because of this one act of generosity by the hair a long, long time ago. Now, I think it's a very wonderful story about generosity. And it also reminds us how generosity needs common sense too. Because I think King Shaka, in a way, is a bit like a common sense person coming to tell us what the right thing is to do and to help us.
King Shakya is common sense, if you like, and he's what regulates generosity and keeps it on the right track. So I hope you enjoyed this story, and next week I'll tell another one about another life of the Bodhisattva when he was trying to get ready to become a Buddha. And I hope you stay safe and enjoy seeing the full moon and thinking about the generous hare when it comes round.